What's going on, everybody? It's Stock Picks by Tim. I hope you guys had a great Easter. We're finally past our three day weekend. Those extended weekends for me, they just get brutal. But it is a good break from the stock market, a time to reflect, a time to look into some stocks, you know, a time to not look at your phone every second. So sometimes a break is good. So today we've got a bit of a red day in the market. I'm going to look over a couple of stocks here. We're going to look over AMD. We're going to look over BNGO, Bionanogenomics. We're going to look over Indy. We're going to look over CleanSpark, see what Bitcoin's doing, and we're also going to look at Astra. Now, if you get something out of this video, don't forget to drop me a like, a subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I put out daily videos, and also, don't forget to check out the links below for some free crypto, free stocks, and the BlockFi credit card. I highly recommend it, and it is the only credit card that I use. Let's get into the video. All right, now, first off, a CleanSpark update. And I wanted to give you guys a video last night, but I just came home a little late. My daughter was still awake and it just wasn't happening. But, you know, I saw that while Bitcoin was starting to pull back, I definitely expected CleanSpark to show some weakness today. Um, Bitcoin did break from 40,000. We'll look at Bitcoin in a second here. But looking at CleanSpark, we're pretty heavily oversold and we're still in a downtrend. We broke out of this channel, but we are starting to use this channel as kind of a trend line. But we are in a critical area. I want to see this support that we are currently at right now, this $9 area. I want to see this hold up. Otherwise, it's definitely possible for us to come down to our next support of about $740. Alright, now, can CleanSpark come back down towards $550? I know a lot of you are wondering. I personally don't think so. But if Bitcoin were to pull back towards the mid-30s, towards the low 30s, I definitely think it's possible for CleanSpark to drop towards 550, although I still think it's highly unlikely. Remember that this was before their earnings. This was before they announced that they are now profitable. This was before they give their increased revenue again, again and again and again. Every quarter, that revenue keeps increasing. Now, I personally really don't expect we're going to see the 550s unless we were to get really, really uh, bearish on Bitcoin and it was to get in the low 30s, if not lower. Okay, but even in that hypothetical situation, I would still be buying CleanSpark because I do believe in the long term of Bitcoin. So if it does pull back short term, that's a buying opportunity for me because I'm bullish on Bitcoin. But if you aren't bullish on Bitcoin, if you think Bitcoin is going to pull back to the 20s and you're very sure of it, you know, you might have a different outlook. All right. Now on Bitcoin's chart here, I'm all the way back to the beginning of this year, pretty much. And you'll see this trend line that we've been following and we are not down there yet. So we can potentially pull back, like I said before, guys to about 38,000, the high 37s, and possibly bounce from this trend line. So this is important to watch. Now looking at, it, at its current price, we are trying to chop around this support area. We are finally testing this area as a support. Last time we dropped, we didn't even test this area. We pretty much just bounced right off of it. So now we are testing it. We will see how it holds up. I'm very confident in Bitcoin at this price. And I personally think, you know, that it's a great time to add. And we are getting closer and closer to that next halving. We are now right about in that middle point. So you could argue, sure, for about another year or so, we might chop around, we might even come down, we might have a bit of a downtrend. But I see that as a great opportunity when you look out three, four, five years. So, you know, if you're looking past your nose in terms of Bitcoin, if you're looking a little farther out, multiple years out, I see Bitcoin as a great time, a great, great time to add in. Same with CleanSpark. All right, next up is going to be Bionanogenomics, or Bingo was his name Oh, B-N-G-O. And as a side note, this one would be great for some momentum changes. You see here... If you would have rid, rode this up, short it here, short it once it breaks out from this trend line, short it once it breaks out from the trend line, short it when it breaks out from the trend line. Easy money. And the same can be said to the upside. Okay, look at this. Downtrend here. I personally love Bionanogenomics at this price. It is very near oversold. Uh, the MACD is somewhat bearish, I'd say, though. And the candles, of course, are bearish, still falling down. We will see where we find a support. I think we will find a support here around this $2 range. We did have a resistance point before we broke out of it here right at about 195 so keep an eye on where it's at currently. However, this is definitely a lot of selling, so this may continue farther. I personally don't expect to see the $1.67, $1.70 low point, but watch out for that if we do pull back towards it. Watch that we don't break this level. If we break this, we are creating newer lows, and that is not good. So I want to see this. If this comes down, that's fine. If it comes down, that's great. As long as we don't break this roughly 165, 170 area, we're golden on bio nanogenomics. And I'm very excited for what the future holds for this one. We are still extremely early. And sometimes the earlier you are, the harder the vision into the future can be. But I know that bio nanogenomics, their SAFR system, is getting more and more acceptance. They've been seeing increased revenue. They expect to get more machines deployed throughout this year. And this provides the medical community or the genomic community a more efficient and productive means of acquiring genetic data. And I think this is huge. 
And next up we have AMD, and this one has been continuing in a downtrend, creating new lows still. So those of you that shorted it right when we broke 100, great job. As for my thoughts on when this could turn around, I think we're definitely likely to test this $90 area and see if we bounce. We are still continuing in a downtrend, so my assumption would be that we will continue down. You don't want to ride against the momentum. Because, think about this, okay? If the momentum is coming down and you're shorting it, the wind is at your back, you know, you're following that trend. But if you see this as a deal right now, and you think right now it's gonna flip, it's very unlikely that you're gonna just call that flip, that you're gonna say right now it's gonna turn. So, personally, I think the momentum can continue down until we break out of this channel, until we break out. And even then, we might have a false breakout, so that's something to think about. But, you know, just knowing that that downtrend, or if we're in an uptrend for that matter, you know, you wanna have that wind at your back. So, trying to time the bottom out, is not impossible but it's very nearly impossible and it's kind of a fool's errand think about this throughout all this time there's probably been people that are like this is the bottom uh this is the bottom this is the bottom this is the bottom and it's just going to continue down until that momentum changes because that momentum is pushing you in that direction you know it just makes it more unlikely that you're going to call it right now you know it's it's more unlikely so you want to see that turnaround you want to wait for the turnaround you don't want to just try to call the bottom out because, like I said, you know, it's just very unlikely. You might get it once in a couple of times, but, you know, you're better off just, if you're a long-term investor and you see something you like at a certain price and it's continuing down, sure, just continue to add potentially. I'm not a financial advisor, of course, but, you know. And if you're short-term on something, you want to see that reversal turn around, okay? So if you're more of a swing trader, th this definitely applies more than uh, for a long-term investor, because if you're a long-term investor, you see something at a good price, you want to buy it. It doesn't matter if it continues down, you're just going to keep kind of averaging through. And as a side note, I've never bought a single stock and fully built out my position in one buy, okay? I've usually pushed my buys out throughout a month, throughout, you know, a couple months, throughout a couple weeks, before building out a position and getting a nice... A nice average price in you know over time just I, I see that as kind of a less risky way to do things sure you might be able to buy in go all in on something and then that just that next day or that next you know it just runs up completely after that but it's very unlikely okay so when things have been in a downtrend when we're kind of in a bearish market when you've got all this recession fears you know you don't want to just go all in and say oh I'm buying this stock I think the bottoms here you want to kind of just average through you want to play that momentum you know, like I said, at $100, when this broke these previous levels, this very strong support, I mean, the stronger a support is, when it breaks that, more people are going to be watching that. If it's a weak support and it breaks down to the down or to the upside, not as many people might be watching, as in something like AMD, where that just that $100 support, psychological level, we broke that, and we're just going to continue down until we find a floor. Is the floor 9261? Is the floor 90? Is the floor 85? Who knows? We will find out. So me personally, I see it long term as a great time to average through. If you're short term, you want to wait to see kind of where we bottom out on this. It's still a falling knife. But that's just my thoughts on AMD. Uh, you know, if we do come towards 90, look for that for a breakdown. But it does depend on the rest of the week. I personally expect that we're probably going to chop around. Go from 90 to about 95 and kind of chop in that area and slowly develop some new supports. That's my prediction. And we can't talk about AMD without mentioning my favorite semiconductor stock, INDI or Indy Semiconductor. And behind me here is a list of some of the manufacturers that Indy supplies chips to. Some big names up there. And here behind me now is the executive team on Indy, and you'll see that they're top notch. They have a lot of experience, and the ones up here that are green, with green circles, indicate that they've been working for plus 20 years together. So for more than 20 years together, and I think that's huge. They know what to do, and uh, for me personally, as a side note that's completely unrelated to stocks, I used to do carpet and a job would just go so much more smooth if you've been working with that person for a while because, you know, you don't need to tell them, hey, go fetch this or hey, I need this, I need that. They're already ready. They already know what you're going to ask for before you even ask for it. You don't even have to say a thing. You can get a whole job done, you know, without even mentioning a word related to work. As long as you're on the same page and you know what you're doing and you've been working together long enough, and you kind of know that person, uh, you know, you know that person well enough to know typically what they want, what how they expect something to be done, etc. And that's a totally unrelated note, and I might edit this out, but we'll see. Now, looking at Indy, we're definitely a falling knife still. We're very near oversold, kind of bouncing off of it. MACD looks like it's about ready to curl, might fall down a little farther. But I want to watch this level. I want to see that we don't break 660. These were higher lows 
And as long as we don't break lower, we, we hit 662, but that is still higher than these other points here. So I want to see it continue sideways or move up. If we fall down, we may break further from this 660 level. So keep an eye on Indy. We may fall further. Be careful with that. Kind of similar to AMD, this is a relatively easy to see support level. So if we do break this, a lot of other people will see it. it might cause a little bit of a sell-off and uh, this falling knife may continue. Personally, I'm extremely bullish on Indy, as you guys that have been around here know. They've, as you just saw, got the team to beat in terms of executive team. They supply the, some of the top autos. And the semiconductor industry is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate. I believe it was something like 45% or 56, 45 to 56%. Either way, that's massive. You know, the semiconductor industry is expected to grow drastically over the next few years. And cars nowadays are requiring more and more chips. And in a recent Neo earnings call, they actually said that one of their cars needs roughly $1,000 in chips. And, uh, you know, that's definitely a lot more than cars even five years from now. So that's something to think about as the future unfolds, as we get more and more smart cameras all around the vehicle, more sensors. Indy will definitely benefit from this greatly. And they gave an increased outlook for their revenue. They expect they should be on that top line of their guidance that they just gave on their last earnings, and that's huge as well. All right, and lastly, I want to go over Astra here. We're going to look at the chart, and then we're going to just look at this article here that wasn't priced in. They might likely give an increased revenue here at some point, maybe not for this quarter, likely for future quarters. So keep, uh, keep that in the back of your mind. But Astra said it sold multiple Astra spacecraft engines to Leo Stella. And there's a partnership or deal that they're doing to provide Leo Stella with uh, Astra's rocket thrusters, essentially. And this uh, value of the agreement was not disclosed, so we do not know this. And we also don't know the number of thrusters ordered. But they will be delivered this year, later this year, and starting 2023. So look for increased revenue guidance in uh, you know Q4 of this year and Q3 of this year. And this was actually a technology from Apollo Fusion, which was one of Astra's um, acquisitions early 2021. And as I've said, guys, their company near term focus remains on launch and they are preparing for a campaign of three launches here throughout this spring. And these are going to be in Cape Canaveral. And they do, like I said, have a goal of monthly launches by the end of this year. And so far, they're right there, right? Uh, I believe their last launch, the distance between, or the time between their last launch, I think, was something like 33 days, I believe, if I'm if I am not wrong. And also, they're on track to do test flights for their 4.0 version of the rocket later this year. So that's going to be another huge thing for Astra moving forwards. But look out for Astra. A lot of launches coming, and they're looking to get that window under a month per launch under a month in between launches that's huge and like i said towards the end of this year it's very possible that we are at bi-weekly launches meaning two launches a month that's my prediction could be wrong of course and looking at astra on the chart you'll see we're still continuing in a downtrend we might hold this resistance area there's kind of a support here a support before we took off we might hold this area as a support. I think it's definitely possible for us to fall further, test some new areas. We're not going to test new lower lows, I don't think, personally. We are very near oversold. MACD looks like it's just about ready to curl. Um, candles are still bearish on the chart, though, and we definitely a very rough day today for a lot of stocks. I mean, the same thing with Indy. It looks almost identical, you know, just complete red bars on the way down. And... If you're long term on these, you know, t days like these where just the whole overall market is just dropping even more. I mean, last week we had four days in a row that were red days. Um, you know, you just got to, to me personally, I got to take advantage of days like this. You know, there's definitely a lot of deals out there. Um, but let me know down below in the comments what you guys see as the best deals in the market right now. What are you loading the boat in? What's your favorite stock? And what's your favorite crypto? But thanks as always, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.